for a very brief and interesting stretch of like four to six weeks, Noah Thomas, the YouTube TRT depersonalization, mental health, fitness, sad, honest guy, did OnlyFans. And it was a very strange time on this channel. And out of respect for just how strange that was, I decided that I was going to do this video shirtless as an homage, let's say, to a weird pocket of my life where I was pretty much naked all the time for like six weeks. Now, some of you are confused and you have every reason to be because I deleted every trace evidence of me being on OnlyFans and me talking about it on this channel. But a lot of people thought it was in poor taste, thought it misrepresented me, thought it was low and beneath me, let's say, and perhaps morally questionable, stuff like that. And so that, in conjunction with some feedback I got in my uh, personal life, in conjunction with some feedback I got from professionals who have worked with me, I decided to stop. And I did, abruptly. Uh, as strangely as I jumped into it, I got out of it really fast as well. So let's get these nips ready for this video because this is the first time I've ever talked about it. And I don't know how often, if ever, uh, that I'll talk about it again. But I want to tell you what my experience was as objectively as I possibly can. And uh, I'm going to let you know how much money I made just for shits and giggles and what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. Um, we're just going to chat about it for what it's worth. I'm so tired of talking about the stuff I normally talk about. I thought that was one of the more interesting times ever in channel history. So I got this idea to get a new car. I was perhaps a little bored, a little waning uh, in my sense of like excitement in my life. I was looking for something. So I was like, I'm going to get a new car. And I brought that up to you guys as well. A Corvette, which is, by the way, sitting in the driveway right now. Um, but that's a whole different story. But to get this car, I was thinking to myself, like, how can I afford it? I don't need it. No one needs a Corvette, but I want it. What can I do to supplement my income outside of my YouTube channels? This one in my big channel, and then I coach CrossFit and, um, and whatever. I needed more money. So I was like, I'm going to do OnlyFans. And I didn't even know what that would mean or what that would be or what that was. I just had heard about it, heard some stories about some people um, making a fair bit of money doing it. And I was like, why not? Why not me? Now, at that particular time, and I think to some extent, even right now, I was trying to give myself permission to explore, to explore my wants, my thoughts, my intentions and motivations. Why do I come across the way I do to people on here? Why do I pursue the line of income uh, or the streams of income that I do for, and for what reasons, right? Or in, as far as motivation goes. Who do I really want to be or what parts of me do I hide from people in order to present in a certain way? So I thought in this honest attempt to see what I really wanted out of my life, if I were to pursue something freely without fear of ridicule and judgment, what would that be? Why not try something like OnlyFans? Now, OnlyFans is a site where a guy like me can go on there, set a price to subscribe to my platform or my channel, my social media site or page rather, and then I can post half naked pictures of myself if I want, which I did. And it was nerve wracking and it was exciting and it was really exhilarating. And then from that, right, if there's like, let's say a $9.99 a month subscription, I can post on my main wall, but I can also post to people's private messages like this is more risque content. Um, maybe me even more naked, less clothes, doing crazier shit. And the whole thing, all in all, was exhilarating. Like there's no way to deny um, taking pictures and videos of yourself and posting them, knowing that people are looking at them specifically for arousal, specifically for erotic reasons, specifically um, to be turned on or to be excited. Just knowing that you're performing in that way, it, it definitely was exciting for me. And let's be clear, the vast majority of people that looked at that stuff were dudes. 
but I didn't mind that. That was perfectly okay with me. And uh, to this day, I'm glad I had that experience because I'm clearly, and I do believe this, I'm very confident and comfortable with my sexuality because it, I appreciated, I enjoyed the attention from the gay guys in that way. I thought that was fucking rad. I just had this instinct to turn off the video like, oh, you've said too much, but fuck it. In the spirit of freedom, fuck it. So I thought that was cool. I didn't mind at all. I had some female viewers, but most of the guys that supported me there were um, were not straight and or were not exclusively straight. The fun side of OnlyFans is that you're making money quick. Um, I think in the 30, 40 days I was doing OnlyFans, I must have made three or four thousand dollars, maybe closer to five. It, it happened really, really fast. And, um, and that was exciting. That was fun too. To like, for example, I would do a video of me in a thong squatting or something like that and I would put it in people's messages and say for three dollars or five dollars you can upload this and I would, or watch it and I would put some like naughty erotic titling or, or subtext underneath it and then you'd watch bring 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 people opening it people purchasing it you're making money it was fun it was fun I found that my sex drive went through the roof um, for the time I was on OnlyFans, like through the roof, absolutely insane. Um, and that was fun. I don't know how fun that was for my wife, but it was fun for me just to be like, wow, this is so exhilarating, this, this side of life that I never considered. Now, now, a few things happened that weren't so fun. One, I immediately could tell that I liked making money quick, maybe a little too much. Or I, I had some cognitive dissonance with within myself regarding who I thought I was and how I was behaving in. And I had to kind of wrestle a little bit with my values and my sense of self and my, my motivations. Um, I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing was healthy, but I enjoyed it. And, and I think being still new in this exploration of self at the time, I wasn't sure if this was leading me towards old unhealthy behaviors or if it was perfectly okay. And, and, and I think that's one of the things that I've been learning to do in my life is examine my reasons for things and my motivations for things and my... Just examine intentions. And I wasn't sure my intentions were entirely good. And one thing I do know is that as um, people wanted more, I wanted to give more, but wasn't sure it was appropriate to. Like everyone wanted to see full frontal, which I didn't want to do, but I was wanting to see how I could get close to that to continue to make money and to push boundaries. And I thought it was really exciting, but that kind of made me nervous that I was pursuing that sort of thing. And it led to some disconnect between me and my wife, which seems imp incredibly obvious, right? Because she wanted to allow me to, sure, explore, whatever you want to explore but what are the boundaries and i found that even though her boundaries were incredibly reasonable i i found myself wanting to go even further and and being a little bit pouty about that for lack of better words and that wasn't good it created some strain and some strife there which was unnecessary that was a red flag another thing that i noticed was that when i started doing only fans and i started spending so much time thinking about what should i post um, what video should I make? How should I film it? It became all consuming because real money was coming in as opposed to YouTube. Like I make beans on this channel. So my excitement and my motivation financially doesn't exist really on this platform. So when I post, it's just something I like to do sometimes. Um, but I don't have that like sense of pressure and I don't have that sense of passion on here and I haven't for a long time. So suddenly I felt that pressure, I felt that excitement, but I also felt that draining presence of like, you need to post again and again and again. And whatever you did last week for your premium content, I would like film myself in slow motion, kind of like moving around in my thong, stuff like that. You have to up the ante, what will that be? All this is to say, it took me out of my regular life pretty quickly. I wasn't able to enjoy the gym the way I had previously always enjoyed it. I found myself thinking about OnlyFans and what I was gonna do next in situations where it might've been nice to be more present and in the moment. Um, it was a bit too all consuming and draining and stressful. And I recognized that. I recognized that and I thought to myself, man, I don't know if this is sustainable. And I was getting some really negative feedback from a few very important people in my life, and that made me insecure. 
it made me insecure. And some of the negative feedback I got from you guys fired me up and it, and it livened me and it brought about this like, this um, annoyance in me that made me want to do it even harder. But people were like, oh, this is so out of character for you. And uh, someone who I, I, I previously had a relationship with who we don't talk anymore, but who we were fairly close given um, all things considered, reached out to me very aggressively, very negatively saying, this is ridiculous, don't do this, you know, you're a mental health YouTuber, shaming me and judging me and ridiculing me, that's how I perceived it. And I got that from a few people, uh, and that was hard for me. That was hard for me because I clearly wasn't on entirely stable ground as to who I thought I was and what I wanted to do, um, and I was vulnerable. And so I think, I think it just created too much of a storm inside me um, as far as judgment. And I, I don't think I was prepared for that. Um, so I decided to stop. It, it, it appeared that I'd made a mistake. And I, I stand by that. I mean, I, I don't want to look at the whole thing. Oh, I don't want to look at the whole thing and just be like, oh, you're bad for having done it. But but I don't. I think it's good that it stopped. That said, when I was doing OnlyFans, that was the most excited I had been to post YouTube content in forever. I mean, I've been so bored of this YouTube channel for so long, I can't even tell you. So to be making content outside of the sphere of depression, anxiety, depersonalization, testosterone replacement therapy, some fitness, some you know life updates, sharing all my highs and lows. I, to do something different was so freaking incredible for my brain as far as tapping into some side of me that actually was inspired again, excited again, nervous a little bit to post. Um, I felt alive, so to speak, as far as this goes. And that was nice, and I haven't recaptured that since I stopped the OnlyFans. Um, I thought that was incredibly fun. I think I also did experience a bit of stress about like my physique. I was like, man, I need to have like the most dialed in physique, especially because I wasn't going to show full frontal. And I had some people on there reaching out to me saying, dude, if you're not going to show full frontal, you'll have to be hyper creative. You can't make a whole lot of money and you need to be really dialed in. So maybe that stress wasn't good either. I don't know. I'm just sharing these thoughts out loud, but that's what happened in my OnlyFans experience. Um, you have to like check messages every day. And so I think some, oh, you know, another thing that's worth mentioning is that I, I saw my OnlyFans thing as a character. I saw the whole thing uh, as a part for me, right? And I, I enjoyed the character of being sexy, big no-no, or whatever you want to call it. But that character had to be fairly flirty, I thought, in order to create good engagement. You had to play this game. I had to basically pretend I was some sort of, um, I was some sort of coveted, sex symbol and, and I had to embody the confidence and the the personality and nature of someone who is selling sexiness and selling arousal and selling excitement to his customers. And I really enjoyed that. Um, I definitely enjoyed that. But I, I think when I was like off duty, when I wasn't being that character, a little part of my brain was like, is this bad that I'm like being kind of like playful and flirtatious with these guys on here as part of this character to make as much money as I possibly could. Um, you know, is that not good? And what does that lead to and, and, and what have you? Um, all of it is interesting to me. And I, I wish more people could have the experience I had and we could talk about stuff like this. And I think human sexuality is fascinating. None of it made me question whether or not I was straight. I, I think that's what made it so easy is that flirting and performing and catering to a, an all-male audience, essentially, 95%, I'd guess, or 90%, was very safe to me. So I was like, I'm a straight guy. So I can do this without any sense that I'm, quote-unquote, um, cheating on Jesse just by even being playful or flirting. Nothing too crazy, but, but definitely being provocative. And I was like, this is awesome because I would never... I'm a straight dude, so this is perfect. I can be this character for these guys and have a lot of fun. And and it feels safe. Now, what I didn't feel comfortable with is doing that with any of, of the 
female customers. I had a few of them and I found that it was really, really hard um, and ultimately quickly became impossible to be flirty with them because I'm a straight male, because I have boundaries. So that was interesting. And all of it brings about like, you know, I wanted to talk more with you guys before it all shut down about human sexuality, about psyche, about morals, about um, mental health in this sphere, but it was short-lived and, and that's okay. Um, and ultimately I don't wanna do anything that that could be harmful to myself or my marriage, and I know that. And I just couldn't be sure that, that what I was doing on OnlyFans was gonna be healthy or gonna be sustainable, so. So yeah, that was my OnlyFans experience. Um, and I'm glad I had it. it. It was certainly, it was certainly fun. And holy crap, was it fun to to uh, to just be this character? It, it was actually super cool, and it, it it was something I I'm really glad I got to experience, even if it wasn't something that was necessarily good for me to hold on to long term. Kudos to me for being brave enough to give it a shot. So that's all I got. Yeah, what are your thoughts on? only fans on people making an income that way and and yeah i hope you guys are doing well i hope you enjoyed this episode which was significantly different um yeah and we'll see you guys in the next video adios